A lot of cozy games have been exactly the same, and I am getting sick of it. I touched on this a little bit in my Cozy Game Suck video, but I recently picked up Coral Island because everyone else was picking up Coral Island, and the whole time I couldn't stop thinking about Stardew Valley, because it's the same freaking game. I loaded into Coral Island waiting to be pleasantly surprised, and boy was I surprised. This game is literally Stardew Valley. You show up to a deserted farm, Robin and Robin number two are helping you figure out your rundown new house and how to improve it. You're tasked with cleaning up your entire overgrown farm, and the game puts you to work. Everything from the TV in your room so you can see what the weather is for tomorrow, to the location of your house on your farm, and the locations of the entrances and exits to the town, with the exception of the, the one on the west. The rest of it, it's all the same. There are villagers to romance, a store that isn't open on Wednesdays, a huge corporation that comes in and tries to destroy the small town that you just moved into. There's just no grandpa dying in his really lame bed. Maybe if he had a better bed, he would have had a better life. Replace that mattress you've been sleeping on for 10 years. Stop messing up your back. Don't be grandpa. There are even bundles that you have to fulfill as part of the main story of Coral Island. I'm not gonna lie, I fully expected some Junimo-esque creatures to come out of the woodworks, but instead we have this goddess and this fairy guy. I don't remember his name, but I like him. Though he does have some Krobus vibes, so I guess he's not very unique. <laughs> I will give Coral Island a little bit of credit. They did add a bunch of extra features that Stardew Valley doesn't have, like other types of pets, different forgeables, the... Okay, I know there's more, but like, I'm blanking on them. Oh, the whole, the whole diving thing? Yeah, and there's a bunch of NPCs that live around town. Way more than Stardew, which means more characters to romance and more stories to discover. Speaking of stories, the main story is different. You're still moving from a city to a smaller town, but it's because of an oil spill rather than a death in the family. If you like Stardew Valley and want a basically refreshed version of the game, then Coral Island is your game. It's a fun game because Stardew is a fun game. If you take heavy inspiration, and by heavy inspiration I mean heavy inspiration, then the new game is going to be just as good as the original art. Let's even take Stardew Valley as an example, seeing as it itself is a game that took heavy inspiration from the Harvest Moon series. The Harvest Moon games were good, especially for their time. Playing the older ones now, it's pretty rough, but I enjoyed the crap out of them back in the day. Now that Stardew is just better in every way, these Harvest Moon Story of Season games seem like a struggle to me. They're missing something. They're missing Stardew Valley, basically. Stardew took the best parts of the original farming games, beefed them up, and fixed a bunch of the bad mechanics. As a result, we have one of the best farm sims that could ever exist. I guess the question I'm trying to ask is should games copy other games? If we're only using Stardew as an example, I say yes, copy away. It was such a successful, well-crafted video game that I wanted every game I love to have an indie developer get their hands all over it and make a better version. But this is the key, better version. Is Coral Island a better version? Sure, they improve some stuff, but I'm not sure if the game as a whole is enough to make me drop Stardew and make Coral Island my go-to farming game. Now that we're in a cozy boom, man, I'm getting sick and tired of this trend. Every game copying each other is just, it's just too much of the same thing. These newer games that are coming out this year have the issue of a ton of competition, but these new studios didn't know that they were going to have a boatload of games to compete against. Many of these cozy installments started development around the time the New Horizons came out. They saw the hype and wanted to capitalize on it. But you can't make a game in a day, you know, it takes a few years. So now that we're in 2023, well it's been a few years, and all these farm sim, life sim, whatever sim games are coming out all around the same time, trying to capitalize on an audience and a genre that are completely oversaturated with the same freaking game. There's only a select few that seem like they have a unique mechanic or plot. The games we actively see all over the internet are the ones with the biggest marketing budget, rather than the games that do something unique and different. Maybe these smaller indie games are really good, but we don't hear about them. We hear about the ones that take over Twitter, like Cult of the Lamb and their new update. By the way, there are a bunch of really good recommendations for good cozy games in the comments of my Cozy Games Suck video, so scroll through the comments if you want something new to play. But beware, YouTube comments can, can, they can kinda suck. 
does Coral Island do enough to differentiate itself from the source work? The answer is very opinionated. It all depends on what you value in a game. Some people love Coral Island for the variety of romanceable NPCs, others like it for the cool animals, and some like it for decoration. Maybe these mechanics are worthwhile for you. I'm in the early game, but so far the craftable items and the stuff in the furniture store, they look pretty nice. I enjoy them. But for me, I need unique gameplay. And while Coral Island may be a good game, it's not unique enough for me to separate it from Stardew Valley. The whole time I play, my brain just keeps telling me to go to my Stardew farm instead. Though I will say, after the first four hours or so, I started to like the game more, but I think that's because it's satisfying to just clean up trash in the ocean. It's basically a reskinned mine, so I don't really know how different it actually is, but something about it is just really satisfying and I, I can't stop. I like, I, I water my crops and then I go dive. I don't do anything else. My friend Chewy Plays brought up a really good point about these games. Video games inspired by other video games starts to get real boring. I'm in that mindset right now with more than just video games. I keep seeing remakes of shows coming out and I'm really getting sick of it. Do I need to watch a live action remake of the Powerpuff Girls? No. How I Met Your Father? Eh, come up with your own original show or a brand new game. We want games to be inspired by other concepts than just video games. But I'm not a game developer. I can't imagine how hard it is to find inspiration somewhere else. But when they do, oh my god, we get a masterpiece. We're in a cozy burnout, or at least I'm in a cozy burnout. There are too many cozy games coming out all around the same time, and I'm realizing that I just need to take a break for a bit. Maybe I'll go suck at playing Valorant for a while. It'll make watering my crops feel like a way nicer experience. Game development is easily accessible now. Not that creating a game is easy, it's a lot of hard work and learning complicated code, but the internet is full of tutorials and smart people who are here to help us. You don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to college and learn how to develop games. Most of these software programs aren't that expensive. Blender's free. You can learn how to be a Blender artist in like a day. I have hope that the more game developers that enter the profession, the more quality games will get over time. But this also opens up other potential issues of games not being up to snuff. We're already seeing a ton of Kickstarters that never see the finish line. I've been hesitant to back some games for this reason which is the risk of paying for a game on Kickstarter. There's no guarantee that it'll become a fully fledged completed video game, but I'm getting off topic. That's like a whole other video. We need more unique mechanics and less farming. I love farming, don't get me wrong, but it always feels pointless. You, you sit here, water your crops one at a time to sell them for money, to buy more crops, to keep watering them one at a time, to sell them, to buy more crops, to keep watering them one at a time. When does it stop? Why am I still farming? As much as I'm criticizing Coral Island, I am enjoying my time playing the game. It's a decent price for a decent game. There aren't any game-breaking bugs or glaring issues. It's, it's really well made. If you like Stardew and want something just like it, but I don't know, more modern and not pixel art, I do recommend Coral Island. But don't expect it to be different than Stardew. I've asked this on Twitter and through a YouTube community post, but let me know what kind of mechanics you would want to see in a cozy game. Something unique that these current games just aren't doing, and maybe your suggestion will appear in a video. Hint, hint, wink, wink. If you're looking for a deeper dive into why cozy games sucked, or if you just want to listen to me complain more, click on this video. You want to. Just click it. Unless you already watched it. Then you know, click it again. It's worth another watch.